Well, they don't even know what's about to happen, but I do. And, um, uh. You guys already know, anytime that I wear my Dunbar shirt, and I don't know why it always works out this way, but whenever I wear this shirt, something big or something important happens, and I don't know how this always happens. But I am at the Ponderosa, obviously. Uh, Big Joe Herd is down here hanging out. It's beautiful, it's green. Calves are doing great, but gonna do something exciting today. But I got a couple of things I gotta knock out first. I gotta put some panels up with our new fence. And you saw that new fence in our uh, burn video, burning all that cedar, uh, the cedar piles. But we've got that new fence, we've got our gates, we are almost ready, we're about 90% ready. I've gotta go back in here and fill in a couple of gaps though where there's been some washouts on um, this new fence line. And uh, they were already there before and I showed some of this when we cleared out the cedars but I've got to go through here I've got some 16 foot I've got some 50 by 16 uh, foot panels they're called combo panels wire combo panels um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to cut and trim these out and put them on the bottom of the fence where those big washouts are so there's no calves or bison that get out um, because some of those gaps where the washouts are are pretty big so um, Maya and I are gonna head out in the pasture and we're gonna take the trailer with us because we're gonna get these combo panels down there and tie them up to our new fence and then the exciting part um, is gonna happen uh, it's gonna be my, one of my favorite things to do um, as a bison owner um, bison producer it's probably one of the coolest things is to let bison out in a new pasture and uh, this pasture is the main part of the fire um, that came through this area and um, this is where it all started so it's super green it's green anyways but uh, it's right over here um, this is just one of the most exciting parts uh, of doing this and uh, it's also just one of those things where it's growing it's to be able to do this it's just one of those things that uh, makes you feel like you're you're uh, you're progressing in your goals and uh, this will be our second pasture this is what we're gonna call this pasture two pasture one is the one that they're in right now currently still got a pile burning um, right now and then what will happen is after I let the big Joe herd in here uh, we're gonna give uh, the current pasture one that they're in right now uh, some recovery time and then we're gonna let the calves they're hanging out right over here. We're gonna let them out there and have a grazing spot. And, the, and it doesn't slow down from right there. Uh, we're gonna continue to uh, start clearing more brush and uh, putting in some new fencing, repairing some fencing uh, for another pasture. So exciting things going on, but um, hope you guys are ready for it. I'm very excited and I'm all, my wife is excited to get these bison out here on this green grass and uh, for the first time. On this pasture, there will be bison. Pasture two, here we come. All right, all right, I'll let you out. You can hang out, it's fine. Don't be a problem. Guys, be good. All right, so what uh, Richard did, our fence builder, 
helped us build this fence. He welded these posts on, a little chain link. I think I've already talked about this once. Uh, just welded a chain link to this. And this, what this does is it keeps pressure and tension on that barbed wire and keeps it from popping up. And the reason is, is for these low spots. You can see this washout right here. Got a little feed sack here. Need to pick up, use for some burning. So here you can see a washout area. Um, there's a washout there, there, there. And uh, this is where a bunch of those cedars were, which part of it, the reason there's no grass here is because of the cedars. Um, and then the other thing is the skid steer came through here and you see the tracks and whatnot. But you see a low spot right here. And uh, let me see. It's, uh, it's uh, about halfway up my thigh. So there's a low spot. Got another low spot right there. And then this one is really high. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, Dusty, that T-post isn't even hardly in the ground. Yes, you're right. But the reason we did that was to kind of keep that level plane all the way across here. Is the reason why we did that. So I've got to bring in those panels and put right here in these low spots. And uh, I don't think the adults would get out. That one's pretty big. They may. But um, here in this area, we put a post right here in the very center of this low spot to really keep everything down and flowing with the land keep that top line going but um, he had to pull it down here because this would have been another huge gap here so but this is nice he put one in here this is low enough we shouldn't have to put a panel here and then the rest of it continues down and we may have to do one more later on but we set a post 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 so five posts right here just in probably 60 70 yards just to keep this fence tight and plus you can't have enough of these posts right here they keep your fence structurally sound tight and uh this is pretty smart to do it like that put those chain links on there keep that pressure down keep this fence tight so i gotta come through here and start putting some of these panels up before i let these bison out All right guys, so I got I end up putting up three panels is what I did. I've got one 16 footer here, 16 footer there, and a 16 footer there, and it, these three washouts right here. So the idea is we didn't have enough time and I really want to get these bison out on this green grass. So what we're wanting to do is clean out some ponds on the property that have silted in. They're only like four feet deep. Uh, what we want to do is maybe once we get some of that dirt, or we want to fill in some of these washouts with that dirt hopefully that we get from the ponds we can fill this stuff in we'll probably need some rocks so it don't just wash away we'll still need something but we'll, we want to come back in and eventually fill this up because this is grazing ground we want to get this back to where it should be and so we'll have to get some dirt in here probably some rock and fill these in here um, so you got one big one there here here and then a small one right there so that's kind of the idea and hopefully we'll do that in the future we'll keep you updated with that um, with a future date if we get uh, some ponds cleaned out um, but I didn't end up cutting any of these I, I hate to trim them up these things are not cheap today but that'll work it at least keep the calves out um, out of it for sure uh, that's usually the only bison is a calf can roll under that um, but usually you don't have those problems. So hopefully anyways, uh, hopefully they'll be busy wanting to stay out here and graze the green grass. Um, here's an old burn pile, uh, burnt really well. Now there's some dirt on it. There's some dirt right there actually. Perfect. It's a lot of dirt. We can use that in here. Look at all the wild indigo.
one of the most important things that we do whenever we start um, putting bison in a fence and uh, we always check our gates. What's interesting about this gate, it's obviously right here on the highway, people are coming by. Very busy road, not a highway, but a road. There is a water line right here in the middle of this. And that water line, you can see a flag right there, a flag here, flag here, there, and it runs down. That is the rural water line. Uh, the bad part about being next to a road like this is uh, there's a, there's always trash. So anytime that I want to mow, I've got to go clean the trash up in the ditch here uh, before I mow it. So it's, uh, it's nice for people to be able to see the bison because they're going to see them over here now. And uh, Myers over there rolling around. But um, bad part is trash. So anyways, no big deal. Just a little side note. But one thing I like to do is chain up all of our gates, put a latch on it and chain it up just in case and then this one specifically we'll put a lock on it because it's so close to the highway here a couple of things i got uh i think this is quarter inch chain i got seven feet of it and then we get these little clips right here to use and then i've got my bolt cutters and we'll cut just enough to wrap around this Brand new clip, take off. It's good to go, can be even a little bit tighter too. Still got some wire wrapped around it. Just making my rounds, checking out these washouts. I got those three done, so I think we are good there, but this is what we call pasture three. This is a corner where my neighbor stops right here at this 40 acres and then I have a new neighbor right here in those thick woods that goes back to the west but um, so this will be our next pasture that we'll put the bison in right here <clears throat> I got this pretty pond right here um, I had the uh, guy with the mulcher Carl I had him clear out a bunch of uh, brush and some blackberry bushes right over here where you could see that pond better this is one of those ponds that really needs to be cleaned out it may only be four or five feet deep um to be honest with you and that's really not deep enough to stock fish and have them for a long time so we'd like for it to be <laughs> maybe at least 10 feet if we can do that depends on the soil and if there's clay down there so you have to be careful when you do that but pasture three is the next one we're going to work on so we'll start right here on this corner and i get to be the guy that goes down there and cleans up all the trees then we'll patch that fence up, I believe. That's another story. But right here, this is where I'm going to uh, put another chain and a clip right here on this gate. It's so important to have gates, guys. Um, and, and you're a cattle person, you already know this. Bison Bruce, you know this. I put a gate right down here. Well, I had Richard put us a gate right down here um, that I share with my neighbor. And, um, oh, there's deer. that I share with my neighbor um, just in case you just ever need it. Just in case. You, you don't hope you ever need it, but, and if it's another way for me to get to his property and him and him to get to my property um, without going on the main road, he can come down here on his back side of his 40 and come through the gate right, right down there. So he can do that. But right here, this is gonna be a 20 acre lot. So I'm gonna get this shut I'm gonna put a chain around it, lock it up, and then we've got one more gate to check and it is time to let the bison out. So I'm getting excited, I hope you guys are too.
Picked up some goodies along the way. I knew some of it was out there. I hate rolling that up. I thought this post was cool. It's got a lot of character on it, but man, it's a mess. Last one. Here it is. See, they're out there in this pasture, pasture one right now. When we let them out, we're going to actually let them go in this gate right here, and they'll be able to run out here. All right, they're ready to go. Big Joe sitting here waiting. They uh, are very excited. <laughs> I say they're very excited. I think I'm the excited one. Um, so these guys, these guys, they uh, saw me with my truck down here and they always know I've got cubes or something good is happening. So the big guy, oh, that was stuck in there really good. Well, they don't even know what's about to happen, but I do. And um, when, when I do these sort of things, I, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm nervous about uh, letting these guys out. <laughs> Anytime you let them out in a new pasture, see, he's already open. He's ready to open the gate. He's ready to go. Um, anytime that you uh, let your bison in a new pasture that they've never been on, it makes you kind of nervous. And and uh, so, but when I do these sort of things, I think is a, is a big deal, um, and um, it's just uh, kind of rewarding. Maybe is a good word. We spend a lot of time. Uh, pushing all this uh, timber uh, on the fence line between me and my neighbor and then uh, we got the fence built and um, Now we get to put them in a pasture, too So uh, when we do these things or I do these things um, I just am very appreciative um, uh, Very humbled By being able to do this. I just want to stress that to you I want to tell you that and I also want to thank people whenever I do something like this and I know I hadn't let them out yet I want to thank Richard for helping us build the fence and um, getting it done. He was working on the fence, so we hired him to do that So, because uh, he's been doing it for a long time, and he does a great job, and um, I put all my trust into him building fence, and uh, it frees me up to do other stuff as well. And we'll be building fence on this property at some point, but he does a great job, and he can knock this stuff out. This is what he does for a living, and um, I trust him, and he can do it really fast. And so that's why we hired uh, Richard to do all this fencing. We'll hire him more in the future because here is a pasture three, already brush hogged a fence line right there. We're gonna go off of this current line here that goes all the way back to the beginning of the Ponderosa entry. So also, besides thanking Richard, I wanna thank Kevin too. Um, I wish Kevin and Marissa were here to be a part of this, but they are both working full-time jobs and I get to be out here doing this. I did have somebody watch Brooks for a little bit so I could come out here, get all this ready to go so I could let the bison go. So every time we move them in a pasture, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to me and I hope it's a big deal to you guys because this is so important. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into this and uh, I hope that you appreciate that because I'm not the only one. I'm about that big on this entire bison industry um, and there's a lot of guys out there that are building miles of fence for these animals in rough places and I'm just that big on the whole scale so what you see is just minuscule of what goes on to raise these awesome animals and uh, I appreciate you guys following along with me on this entire journey and I know they're only going in a 20 acre pasture <laughs> but it's a big deal uh, it's a big deal to me and my wife and um, so I just want to share that with you, and I'm glad you guys have been part of this. Without further ado, let's let these guys in pasture two, their new pasture for the first time. Here we go. Come on! Come on!
I know, you're jealous. You'll be out there soon. Soon. It'll be your turn, someday. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. I, uh, I love, love doing that. And uh, they're way over there, hanging up on the fence line close to my neighbor. But uh, I love doing that, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, every time that we move the bison to a new pasture, after we get it ready, we're going to do that for you. We're going to bring you along on that. And what a cool experience. And speaking of that bird right there, um, that, I believe, is a cattle egret. And he's probably flying over there to hang out with them. How neat is that? Within three or four minutes of the bison running around, a cattle egret shows up. And uh, those cattle egrets are uh, just part of this whole ecosystem. And um, I love seeing animals like that uh, where the bison fit into this entire um, system right here and I love that and that's just nature right there I love that um, the bison just fits that entire mold of, of mother nature and being here for for hundreds of years and uh, that is an awesome sight to see that out there and hopefully you get to see more bird species I'm kind of a ornithology guy and I love uh, I love birds believe it or not so um, these guys will be next right here. I'm letting them out here into our kind of a trapper front area. I just let them come out here and graze this down. Uh, these guys will be headed out to pasture one, which is where Big Joe and them came from. We're going to give it some, some time to recover and um, because Big Joe and them have been on it. So we'll keep these calves up close to us for now, which is where they've been. And then we'll let them out into the pasture and get them some green grass as well. So I know I only have nine adults out here with the Big Joe herd, but um, you know, I just get excited every time that I let them out. So, hey, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being a part of this. You caught a special moment um, for me and Marissa and uh, just across Timmer's Bison family. So, glad you guys got it.